today we take on trick house number seven and we're going to do the same routine as usual look at every piece of furniture to find the trick master why i have to do this i don't know it's not like it adds any fun it's just tedious and now he's as i said several times before he always says the same thing so i'm just going to turbo scroll through the text and which puzzle do we have today oh yeah, those things from the Moss D Gym. Now, Skarmory going in the lead because it's lagging in terms of levels. And we're starting off with a force double battle. Super. So, by the way, before you ask, yes, I am aware that YouTube increased their maximum video length from 11 to 15 minutes. However, I am not going to take advantage of that for a very good reason. It's that when I make videos after a while, the video and sound from the game start to desync. And after a while it becomes more noticeable, especially past the 10 minute mark. So if I go past 10 minutes, you might start to notice that uh, the, the audio, I think uh, the audio is the one that's falling behind, yes. So yeah, the audio is going to be like two or three seconds late at the end of a 15 bit uh, of a 15 minute video. So that's why I am still going to be sticking to the old 10 minute limit, even though I know I can now upload 15 minutes videos. I do not want to see a flood of messages in my inbox telling me that oh, you can make 15 minute videos now. I know. Everybody knows. Dogs know. So please leave me alone with this. It's a choice I made to favor a synchronization between the game's audio and the video and versus the video's length. It, it, besides, it's not like it removes anything if my videos are a bit shorter or rather that they're not longer. But okay, next subject. I came across a picture a few days ago of the uh, Generation 5 starters and they were, well, I wouldn't exactly say Rule 34 because the picture more or less mocks Rule 34. You got those uh, feminized versions of the starters, but thankfully they wear clothes. Thank fucking God, because I'm I'm still having nightmares from that scissor with 38 DDs, and that was two years ago. So yeah, I'm going to link that picture in the movie description because surprisingly, it's a lot funnier than any picture related to Rule 34 has any right to be. But as I said, it sort of spoofs Rule 34 more than it follows it. So, I guess that's okay and doesn't really qualify as not safe for work since, as I said, the starters at least have clothes on. <laughs> Bayonet is using curse and it's committing suicide with that. And I think I get my free switch before the curse damage comes in. Yep, I get my free switch right now and I'm gonna send in um, Reg Ice, yeah. So, yeah, that was just stupid. It committed suicide and accomplished exactly nothing. Now, um, yeah, as I was... <coughs> oh my god! This is officially the worst trainer ever. Kadabra using a recover at full health. I don't know, maybe the trainer thought I'd go first, but against the Regice? Really? Come on, that... that just suck. This guy is officially the worst trainer ever. And so late of the, in the game, too. Okay, and I was talking about uh, black and white starter pictures earlier on. I don't know if, um, if you've seen what I'm going to talk about, because uh, what I'm going to talk about, in fact, is a comic about Mijumaru, and it's actually quite popular, and in, in case you haven't seen it, I'm going to put it in the movie description as well, but it's the most sickeningly cute comic you will ever see in your entire life. Like, if there's only one reason in the world why anyone would want to pick Mijumaru, it's probably this comic. So I'm gonna link to it in the movie description so you can see for yourselves just how ad 
adorable it can be despite the, the official art not doing it any favors. And I honestly don't know what it is about Mijumaru that rubs me the wrong way. Maybe it's the facial expression like that permanent frown that it's got on its, on its face. First stage starters are usually more cheerful looking than that, but Mijumaru is just a... Well, actually, you're not seeing me do that frown, but I was frowning in the microphone, if that makes any sense. But, as I said, the comic still makes a pretty good job of making Mijumaru look cute. And I guess now it's time for some puzzle solving, and I can't just move the trainer out of the way, so for when I return, and okay, now this one is a room with a tropic male, again with the useless male. Why did the trick master insist on putting those things in there? And yeah, now this warp was like uh, the poison warp, if you will, with the uh, two trainers attacking me at the same time. But okay, it's not like I was trying to avoid it anyway. Oh, 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 oh! We're in trouble here. Wap up it. So at least now I have two Pokemon to attack it. So I'm going to go with return and Ice Beam, a boat on Wabuffet. Now this time, I noticed how I didn't go for Fly because it would have been e an easy way to get my ass kicked, either with its mirror coating Ice Beam back on Reg Ice or countering Fly eventually. But, well, at least it didn't suffer too much damage, even though that Chime Echo is still alive and hurting me with Psy Wave. And yeah. Once again, I'm going to focus my attacks on this little sucker. I never understood why Chimeco got a baby instead of an evolution in Generation 4. Who the heck thought this was good enough and that it didn't need to evolve and it got a baby instead? That just absolutely makes no sense. Did they even check how bad Chimeco was just because it was Presumably, last in the game code in Ruby and Sapphire doesn't mean it was any good. And that's just, once again, a rumor. I don't know if, it's actu if it actually was last in the game code in Ruby and Sapphire. But I was talking about that a few videos ago, and someone pointed out very accurately that... Um, oh, you gotta be kidding me! Now I gotta go all the way back to that blue switch that... I didn't even bother going to the first time around. So yeah, someone pointed out very accurately that, that if you imported, for example, something from Colosseum or that you hacked it and it wasn't in the original Hoenn decks, well, the 180 Pokemon, 184, sorry, Pokemon that aren't in the Hoenn decks, well, they were, they, they followed Deoxys in the Hoenn decks. So for example, if you hacked a Bulbasaur in Ruby and Sapphire and you didn't get the, the national decks, Bulbasaur would be 203, Ivysaur 204, and so on and so forth. And, and Celebi was the last one, of course. So now, yep. I think we're done with this place now. It wasn't so hard. It took a little time because of the battle and... Um, wait, did I just read Trickmaster is huggable? Okay, this game has gone up several levels of creepy. And that's after Juan's harem basement, mind you. Trickmaster is huggable. I really hope that's an inaccurate translation from... Ja from Japanese because otherwise no better stop thinking about it now ah! I just thought of the scissor with 38 DDs again ah and um, okay this is going to be it for today and in the next video we're going to be exploring some waterfalls so for that purpose I'm going to give waterfall to tentacles since I haven't done it yet and I'll see you next time we're going to go to meteor falls <laughs>